Hey, this is Dana White from the UFC, and you're watching ProMMANow.com. Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here for ProMMANow.com with the one and only Rowdy Ronda Rousey. How's it going? Good, good. It's, it's going. Do you like coming to these media things and the fans, or is this kind of like a, a job you are? As long as you're not in camp, you don't mind it so much. Yeah, I mean, we're far away from camp, and this is why I think this is such a cool opportunity, is to be able to be really efficient and knock all of these things out, and uh, do it when you're far away from the fight and you're you're not in the middle of preparing. So, no, I'm, I'm kind of stoked that they set this up. It's less work for me later when uh, it really counts. So, uh, um, um, you talked a little bit on the stage there about what tough was like. Obviously, you worry about coaching and worry about the athletes first. I think that's great. A lot of people respect that, especially from you know that kind of background. But how emotional did she get you at times? You said you're going to be out of the country. You want to give us a hint at what some of the stuff did she break you down, or was there some real nasty fights between you guys? Or I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a really emotional person, and I tell people I, I cry all the time. I'm just passionate about everything I do, and I have no filter. Whatever I'm feeling, you're going to see it. And I I didn't the whole season. I I didn't do it for me. I didn't need to do the ultimate fighter. I have so many opportunities coming up, but I wanted that division to really do well and for it to be highlighted and I really felt like I could help that out. And, um, sorry, it was like really loud over there. I'm kind of getting distracted. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I didn't really care how I looked and how I felt is exactly how I emoted it. And, um, Misha spent a lot more of her time worrying about how she looked and how she came off more than her fighters. And I know that you know, personally from talking to her fighters and my fighters, you know, there was a very open forum and, um, you know, to this day, I still, I, I was talking to my fighters right before I got on stage and, you know, just around, like, hi, I love you all, like, you know, just, well, I like to say that we're the meanest yet most affectionate team and um, team fake nice versus team real mean was my whole slogan the whole season. Nice. <laughs> now over at, over at Gokar's Highest Sound Academy, I just, I talked to Manny, he was one of your assistant coaches, your grappling, one of your, like, grappling assistant coaches, right? Yeah, he was like the MMA whole assistant Coach. Who else did you take out there with you? Uh, my my really good friend uh, and with a lot of judo experience, Marina Shafir, and um, I also took uh, uh, Edmund, my my striking coach, who was like the head coach, and then Glendale uh, Fight Club. Yeah, from Glendale Fighting Club, and then uh, Andy from SK Golden Boys was there as my wrestling coach. Oh, very nice. Um, talking about Marina, she's got three first round armbar submissions, kind of like you started. Does she got a fight coming up, or what? What are her plans? Yeah, she, I think she has a fight coming up, uh, or it might be her last amateur fight at the end of August. So. Uh, um, and I think it might be local. It might even be in this very room. We'll see. Now, is she 145 or 135? She's she fights 45. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after after Misha, maybe you throw a beat down on her again, and then you you got uh, Kat Zagano still in wait. I think she's still going to get her shot from what she's been told. Um, who do you think might be coming up after that? What about Sarah McMahon? Oh yeah, Sarah McMahon's been on my radar for a long time now. So and, uh, I think that's going to be the big one eventually, Olympian versus Olympian. Yeah. And oh, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm I really think that'd be a really great fight in general it'd be easy to sell and um, but she's expressed she's not really in too much of a rush to fight me and so um, you know whenever she's ready I'm ready I'm, I'm, I'm at the destination you can come 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 there when you want and yeah. you know then we'll figure it out but. so forget about cyborg or anyone else who's not in the division there's plenty of girls out there that you you really want to deal with oh yeah there's there's so many and the division is just really starting to unfurl and people are just starting to know the fighters the, 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 the problem isn't the talent isn't there is that the awareness isn't there and that's what tough 18 is really there to do is to bring awareness to these women did you watch cyborg's fight yeah do you see anything technically great or you just see a really strong powerful person um, I saw a lot of things that she did that I would capitalize on that Marlou's event and um, you know it, it, it took cyborg longer this time to, to beat Marlou than the other time and uh, this is somebody who her last really meaningful fight was against Misha Tate and she lost so it takes you four rounds to beat somebody that Misha beat easier than you did and it's just um, in a mathematical sense it's just kind of like okay well she's not really impressing anyone too much do you kind of want to get your to like the second round would you like it if cat maybe is tough enough to, to go to the second round or third round with you so you can get a little more ring time in and maybe use some of your boxing skills uh, I you know I really feel like I have so many tools that I haven't been able to show um, inside actual fights that I have but um, I'm not gonna purposely you know drag fights out if the the person can push me and actually make me have to um, really think deep and kind of have to like you know improvise more and longer then I'll come up with cooler stuff 
But, um, you know, they got to push me that far first. Yeah, I mean, everyone's just a straight armbar, straight armbar. Had you gotten that, that uh, crooked armbar, like Udi Garami with your legs that you were trying on Liz, would you have been ha happier had you got that? You don't care what it ends in. Oh, I wasn't... The idea behind that wasn't specifically to get that arm. Um, the mistake that I made was it was a very smart thing to do in the middle of the cage, but I did it against the wall, and I hadn't been training grappling against the wall for that camp, which we changed immediately. Okay. Um, but the thing I was trying to do was um, if her arm was too low, then I would catch her with my legs. Um, but I was hitting her in the face, so she was had to try like find a happy place in the middle to really protect her face. To get her to cover, and but also keep her arm from getting too low. And if her face, her arm got too high, then I would push it up, and that's how I ended up getting the arm bar. Was I wanted to bait her to stick her arm too high so I could get my head behind it. Um, so it was just really forcing reactions out of her. It was like you have three options: you can get arm barred this way, you can get punched in the face, or you can get arm barred the other way. And so um, those were her three options from that position, really. And then she, you know, she narrowed it down until it was finally just the arm bar. I'm glad you got into that. I think uh, your your Ronda's fighters cut was really awesome. That you know, kind of explaining well this way, this way, this way shows really how high level you are. And I don't think people really appreciate that. They see, they see an arm bar, they don't really I, understand what it takes to get that. <laughs> yeah, all those arm bars are so different to me, and the thought process I narrow them down is so different. It just it just looks the same in the end. But I mean, like, if you have a boxer and like you know, yeah, it ends a knockout a ends like this. <laughs> but what happened before that point? And people are just looking at that little point right there, and they're not thinking, they, did it come from here? Did it come from there? Did it like you know? There's so many different possibilities, and it's just like the lack of like of uh, knowledge I think that people have of the grappling game that this oh it just always looks the same. I'm like, what are you talking about? That was totally different. But um, it looks the same to like layman. All right. Well, I think other people want you. So thank you very much for your time. Guys, go to PoemaMainNow.com for all your information and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dan the Wolfman One. Thanks.